Jason Williams was one of the most exciting players to watch, really of all time. The court vision, the delivery, the ball handling creativity. But he did a lot more than just that. And pretty much any player can learn from his game. So I broke him down under the microscope. Check it out. The first quality that I noticed about J. Will's passing is how in control he was at high speeds. And this goes for both body control, being able to make really precise passes at high speeds, and also being psychologically in control, being able to slow the game down and remain composed even when running in transition with ever-changing options. Another trend you'll notice is that regardless of the flashy passes, he was also pretty damn good at making the fundamental pass. Especially once he got a bit older and a bit more mature as a player, those passes were delivered right on time. And part of this is that he rarely delayed a pass when it's open right away, like you'll see many young players do. Like here, that pass is open, and even though he could keep driving, why not just make that pass? But he's also very patient in not delivering it too early, so it's a fine line from play to play. Again, he may be able to fit it through here, but that defender's hands are up. So he hangs a little bit longer, makes that pass a lot easier. Also watch how hard he's driving at the bucket with his eyes locked in on that rim. This gets a second line of defense to commit to him, kind of acting like a magnet attracting them towards him. So that teammate becomes much more open and that delivery much easier. Also notice that even on his flashy passes, a lot of them were very in control. Even coming from a jump stop or having come to a stop on two feet. Or he'll at least get into a staggered deceleration, where he's buying time by going 1-2 with his feet. So what's the function of these flashy passes? Well one, they look cool, and that's a solid reason in itself. If you can get your crowd and teammates into it with a pass, why not do it? But number two is finding creative ways to avoid the long wingspan of NBA defenders, whether it be delivering it behind the body using the eyes or throwing off timing it really keeps defenders guessing at all times and that's a pretty good trait to have and the last thing that i really think made j will so good at these type of passes was just how quickly he got the ball from the dribble into the pass not much of a delay at all and everything became really crisp and you got to be really really confident to make these passes and that's definitely not something that he lacked. Alright, so first thing here, Williams played with great pace. He'd many times get up the court before the defense was set, which especially back in that era, was not that common either. He played a ton out of hezzies, or using hops and skips. Being a capable shooter from mid-range in the perimeter, it'd leave the defender with two options. Either step up, or leave that shot open and he just read it from there. Right here he gets into that hop out and he's open so he shoots it. But here it's the same exact option. But the defender steps up, he gives a little shot fake and he's gone. Another thing you'll notice when he's exploding out of these is the wide angle he takes. This isn't great for all players, but once he gets that advantage, he knows he's not gonna be too physical with the defender. So he takes a little bit wider of an angle but gets turned to that basket and makes the finish easier. And one of the most frequent times he'll use this hezzy is out of the pick and roll in the mid range. He'd come off, get into one of these hezzies, in and outs or skips, and it'd be a great way for him to get rhythm into that jumper, and also get those couple extra inches of separation. His pace on the pick and roll was also very impressive. Knowing when to go slow, when to go fast, that's a really important skill. And it makes reads like splitting the screen that much easier, which is a sudden read for sure. But it's not something that has to be made in a split second if you take your time like he does here, reads that defender coming up to hard hedge, and then makes that read as he's in control. Another interesting note is that splitting the screen behind the back like you see here is helpful when you can't get your full body turned downhill at first, but you still want to take that quick split. But back to that pace, it overall enhances your ability to make the correct read because you're constantly in control. And because of this, Williams did make the correct read many times. Too many younger, inexperienced guards will go 100% speed on the pick and roll. 
which takes away from the time you have to read the defense and take that correct option. In ISO situations, once again, he played a ton out of these hanging in and outs, hezzies, and more. And all these are really great options for getting into unexpected jumpers. And you'd be surprised at the percentage of ISO situations in which he uses these. Of all the possessions I watched, it had to be at least 50%. And lastly, one thing that really made him effective on these mid-range shots is just how quickly he got off the ground into his shot. By the time he's releasing the ball, the defender is not getting to that because of how quickly he pops off the ground. All right, so a few quick notes on his finishing. Obviously not the most explosive off the ground, which I think is primarily why he used a ton of two foot finishes. He's in a stronger position here and it allows him to change direction. See how he's driving in here and then uses that two foot jump to change direction into the finish. He also used a ton of what I call sneak finishes. So he's not telegraphing that he's gonna go up with that finish, but the next thing you know, that ball's up in the air and almost onto that backboard. Very, very unpredictable getting the ball into that finish. And then lastly, he finished a lot coming across the lane. Again, this is something defenders don't really expect, and it's a tough finish because you have to fully rotate your body back to that rim. But he had it down and he used it a ton. So like I always say, take what you want from his game, a lot of it can be applicable, some of it may not be, but all of these are options that you can add to your game. Make sure to get in the gym first if you want to try any of these things out in a game though. Thank you for watching. As always, stay tuned for more and follow me on Instagram at ByAnyMeansBasketball for way more coming.